And what I'm trying to do is permanently hardwire this to the back of the 4B. Hey, what's up everyone? It's Duncan from Overland Journals. Today's video, I'm going to talk to you about my compressor. Now, every off-road tourer, a basic essential piece of gear that you should carry is a compressor. Now, compressors come in different shapes and sizes and to fit all kinds of budgets. And I've gone for this single piston thumper compressor. It's a portable type, so you can, you know, move it around and ideally how it works is you plug it in or you clamp it onto the battery terminals and then thereafter you start inflating your tires. Now, and that's convenient because that's easy. You move it around to wherever you want and then you get your inflation done. Now, I'm trying to make it a little bit more convenient for my requirements and what I'm trying to do is permanently hardwire this to the back of the 4B. Now you might wonder why haven't I done that already? Well, all this time space was a constraint for me and um, a few months ago I bought these new collapsing type camping chairs. If you missed that video, go check it out. I'll leave it in the description below. And since I've got those two camping chairs, it's opened up a whole lot of space for me and I've been able to move things around. Now, for, for example, on, the, on either sides here, on this side and on this side, I kept that space specifically to chuck in stuff. And in between are my boxes, which I have removed for the moment, and my fridge. Now, the spaces I had for chucking in, one area was for my camping chairs. And ever since I changed to the new chairs that I've got, because they sit nice and flat, I'm able to put it inside the 4B behind the driver and passenger seat, and that freed up a whole lot of space. And because of that, I was able to move all everything that was here onto that side. And this entire space is now free. And that's where I'm going to in hardwire the compressor. So the whole idea is have it hardwired, plugged into my electrical system. And then when I want to inflate my tires, all I have to do is put my hand in through the side window, pull out the hose, and then just walk around inflating my tires. So try and make it more convenient for myself. But before I could do that, I need to do a little bit of a modification to the electrical connection of the compressor. So come with me to my shed and let's get that done first. By the way, if you're new to my channel, please hit the subscription button and the notification bell because my channel is all about sharing my experiences in overlanding with the rest of the community. And I bring out a video every single week. From the middle of April, we're going to start bringing out our monthly newsletters and April would be our very first newsletter. So if you want to receive those newsletters, head on over to our website, overland-journals.com link in the description below as well, and sign up to the newsletter. Also on the website, every piece of gear that we carry, we have tried and we have tested and we are happy with, we have links to those web, uh, products on our website in the store section. And from there, you get a link where you can go and find those products. So if you're interested in some of the gear that we carry, so head on over to our website. All right, so here's my compressor. And when the compressor, when I bought it, and I've been using it for a little while now, when I bought this compressor, it came with these battery clamps. So the total idea is simple. You clamp it onto your battery terminals and away you go. It just works. But what I'm trying to achieve here is to hardwire this compressor to the electrics within the, the 4B, particularly towards the back. And, and it's a convenience factor for me because when it's hardwired, then it's easy for me to access. I don't have to worry about getting it out of the vehicle, going over to the battery, clamping it, and, and any of those things. Now, in order to hardwire it, I need to get rid of this. And then the idea is to put on an Anderson plug. Now, what is an Anderson plug? Well, this is what an Anderson plug looks like. They come in different color codings, and Anderson plugs can start, in terms of what it can handle, can range from 50 amps, like this one, all the way up to 350 amps. So whatever purpose that you have, you need to pick the correct connection. Now, in it's very important to keep in mind whatever accessory or whatever electrical system you're going for, uh, the cable from the cabling to the connections, they all, and the fusing obviously, 
should be able to handle whatever capacity or whatever current draw each accessory pulls. Now, in my case, this particular compressor, it can it pulls up to 40 amps. That's what the specification sheet tells me. 40 amps, this Anderson plug and the electrical system at the back of my 4B pull can handle up to 50 amps. So I'm, I'm well within that. So that's all good. So now in order to do this, to this little modification, uh, which I'm gonna share with you, so keep watching till the very end. I am, the, what do I need for it? So obviously I need an Anderson plug, that's stated the obvious. Now, so those of you who may not know what an Anderson plug is, so that's what an Anderson plug looks like. It comes marked, which is your positive and your negative terminals or connections. And when you buy them brand new, they also come with these two connection pins or pins which will eventually go into the plug and I'll be showing you all that. And each pin comes with this hollow insert. Now that's where your cable goes in. And once your cable goes in, you can seal it using uh, soldering or you can crimp it using a crimping, uh, crimping tool. Uh, I personally don't like crimping when I'm particularly doing a DIY job because if I don't crimp it properly, then I leave room for the cable to work loose, particularly when you're doing the kind of traveling we do off-road touring and with all those corrugations and so on, it can eventually over time work loose. Also, I feel that when you have exposed cable over time due to moisture and so on, it can rust and it works its way all the way through on the entire cable. <clears throat> so in uh, my case, I am going to solder it and I'll, I'll solder it in such a way that it's completely protected. So that's what I prefer now. You also need some <clears throat> soldering wire. You will need a pair of pliers, a little knife, and a blowtorch or a blow gun. Now, why this? Well, you can use a soldering gun, but I don't like a soldering gun or soldering iron. Uh, to me, one of these things seems to work a lot quicker and a lot more efficiently. So, let's get down to it. Now, now the whole idea is all I have to do really is cut that part off, chuck it away, and then put the Anderson plug onto this end, which I'll then plug into my electrical system. Well, I'm not gonna chuck this away. What I am gonna do is I'm gonna put Anderson plug to this end as well. So I eventually I will have two Anderson plugs. Now, why two? So my thinking is if for some reason the, the electric system within the 4B fails for whatever reason, hopefully not. If it fails and I still need to get my tires inflated, which is crucial depending on you know the surface I'm traveling on, I can then remove the compressor from where it's mounted. And all I have to then do is get this part, this end of it out of my storage box, clip the two connections together because that's how these Anderson plugs work. They kind of clip into place like so and they stay very secure, clip it into it, take the compressor across to my battery, clamp it onto the battery, and there you go, I am good to go. So, now let's get down to getting this connection done. So that's what my cabling is and how long it is. So I'm gonna cut somewhere here, so I've got enough length on this end as well as enough in length on this end. So here we go. Then take my knife and then sort of open it up a bit. Now the next important thing is to get these pins on and make sure the amount of cabling I expose is just enough, not too long. In fact, I'm going to keep it a little short as well. So I put it into the pin here and I kind of mark it off so it's somewhere here. And I get my knife and clean it up. Now, of course, if you've got a splicer, 
then of course it makes it a lot easier you don't have to work with a knife I don't have one so it's not something I do regularly so there's of course no need for me to get a splicer but if you do have one or if you can get some from a friend of yours or whatever then uh, that makes it a lot easier so there you go so I've got the two ends cleaned up quite nicely and I've twisted them and now if I go back to my two little pins here it goes in quite nice and once I fill it up with soldering as I said the important thing is I don't want any um, exposed cabling so that's why I got it a little bit shorter than the actual amount it can go in because then once the soldering is done it's going to seal it up entirely not leaving any exposed cabling so once I've done that and my cable is ready then what I'm going to do is get my vise here and um, if you haven't got a vise you know you can always use something else like when I didn't have a vise vise at one time what I used to do is get one of these type of clamps and all I do is um, get the clamp and get the clamp to hold like so so you, you know there are you know you can sort of you know make a plan I suppose if you don't have a vise but I do have a vise in this case so there you go so put it into place happy with that get the um, blowtorch and I'm gonna heat this up then get the soldering in there until it's full of soldering now keep it warm and then you just chuck in your cable leave it for a short while until it cools off there you go so that's one done now to do the second one same way so now that you've got the soldering done now it's a question of pushing it into the Anderson plug so it goes in from this side and it will appear from this side and it will lock into place now it's very important before you do the cut you should make sure which one is positive and which one is negative and I had done that and then once you push it in in here it will tell you which is positive and which is negative so that's pretty 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 important so you push it in from this sort of the roundy edge not the where there's a square facing opening so it's the round one and when you push it in you will notice this pin is kind of like curved downwards so you it has to go down facing down not that way it will not lock into place so it shouldn't go like that it should go like that and all you do is push it into place until you hear it click and lock into place there you go yeah so you'll hear two clicks and that means it's locked into place now that's perfect so when you're pushing it and it should it should quite easily with a little bit of force lock into place and you hear two clicks like you did here a little earlier but if that doesn't happen, um, all you need to do is get, get a screwdriver and then push it, give it a little bit of helping and it'll lock into place. Once it's locked, you will see the two pins. I hope the camera picks it up. You will see the two pins are right towards the front of the connection. There you go. So once this, once you've done that, then this will plug in to another Anderson plug on the other end. It has to be the same color of Anderson plug. It'll lock in and there you go. It's easy as that. Okay, so now that I've got the Anderson plug installed onto the um, compressor, and this is the space I had marked out for where my compressor is going to sit. And this is pretty much this area has been where all my electrics have been. And out of the frame of the camera is where the fuse box is. So basically what happens is the line, the power supply line from my second battery comes in here. And that's the Anderson plug that's supplying. And then from there, I get line out. So one would be going to my inverter, another one going into the, the electrical system, which basically powers up my fridge and the LED lights. And then the third one would be coming now into my compressor. So what I'm going to do, what I have done really, is I have pre-drilled some holes onto the base plate of the um, compressor on either side. This is the sides of my back drawer system so this is wood so it's easy to you know put a self-tapping screw 
into place. So four of them I'm going to put on either side, two on either side, so four all together. And that's going to hold the compressor into place. And once I've done that, I'm going to plug in the Anderson plug to the supply line, tidy it all up, and then hook in the hose over here. So the whole idea is when I want to pump up a tire, then all I have to do is reach in from the side window here and then hook up the cable, uh, the hose. Well, in fact, the hose will be already pump, uh, plugged in or as it is, and I'll keep the cable, uh, the hose tucked away over here. And then all I have to do is reach in, take it out, switch the pump on, the switch is, the compressor pump switch is over here, switch it on and away I go. So that's the plan. So here we go. So let's get this installed which should not take too long. As I said, I have pre-drilled the holes. The compressor hose, which I'll tidy up in a minute, will sit, once I've rolled it up nicely, it'll sit on this corner here. Now, when I was positioning the compressor where to be, to be mounted, one thing I did intentionally is leave enough space back here so I can slot in the hose and it'll sit there. So that'll be its permanent sort of resting space, you could say. And then when I need to use it, all I have to do is come in through the window, pull this out, switch it on from the switch up front here and away I go. Now, even though these Anderson plugs locks into place quite securely, I go the extra length and I put in a cable tie as well and just to make sure it holds nice and firm. Um, it may not be necessary, but this is just something I do in order to give it that little bit extra strength. So there you go. So I've got my Anderson plugs all securely in place, cable tied onto the cargo barrier. The um, I could have got it a bit more neater, I felt, but then again, working in confined spaces, uh, it was a bit of a uh, challenge. So I've done it the best I can. As long as it works, I'm pretty happy with that and it's away from getting clashing with anything else within the load area. And the compressor now sits in there. The hose will be in this space over here. And all I have to do is pull the hose out and reach in through the side window. And there you go. Switch on and off the compressor. So I hope you enjoyed that video and found it useful. If you liked it, please do give it a thumbs up, share it with others if you think it'll be useful to others as well. And oh, by the way, if you haven't um, subscribed already, please hit that subscription button and the notification bell. Bring out video every single week. Don't forget to leave questions and comments if you have any relating to this video. And don't forget to head on over to overlandjournals.com and sign up for that newsletter. Thanks for watching.